I've been asked to write a song for the Fullers who started Habitat for Humanity. I can't conceive of anything we could have done with our lives that would have had more meaning to it. They're just such an inspirational couple that you want the song to be an inspiration to. Well, this is your song and we hope you like it. Jamie O'Neill, and I'm a singer and a songwriter. I've had two number one songs and just had a number three record. Jamie and I have four songs on the current album. Brave, which is the, the title track. I Love My Life, Naive, On My Way to You. Jamie and I wrote four songs on the Shiver album, including There Is No Arizona, which was a number one hit. Tim and Shay and I have been asked to write a song for the Fullers who started Habitat for Humanity. The former millionaire gave away his fortune to build for God. The challenge is this, to end poverty housing. Habitat for Humanity is a catchy phrase. Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity. The mandate that we feel from God is to make it possible for everybody to have a decent place to sleep. I was in law school at the University of Alabama, and I was very engaged in a number of business enterprises with a business partner, Morris Dees. Well, Millard and I dated all during my senior year of high school. Millard never proposed to me. He told me I was going to marry him. In fact, he said, I'm going to be a millionaire someday, and you're going to marry me. And I thought, OK. <laughs> She didn't object, and uh, so we set a date and got married in 1959 in August. It was 1959, and she was 17. It's pretty. When, I mean, what's the title? How Should it be about building or? Just look what love built. I like that. You know? I like that. We kept saying, you know, what title really fits the song and we wanted look what love built and um, and I thought it was really cool you know as long as we talked about you know building their lives and, and building their fortune and then and then building habitat for humanity he was tall and handsome and swept her heart away at the beginning of our life Linda and I had a good relationship Linda became pregnant soon after we were married, and, and our first child, Chris, was born. Then we moved down to Montgomery, Alabama, the capital city. My business partner, Morris Dees, and I opened up a law practice, and we were just focused on making all of the money that we could so that we could become rich. Mellard was very engaged in law practice and the business, and of course, I was a full-time student, and we had a, a baby at home. From the time we got up in the morning to the time we went to bed, it was just work, work, work. The business was growing. Every day, the success was just tumbling over itself. Here on uh, March 12, 1961, I wrote uh, in my journal, my prediction is that toothbrushes will be the gimmick by which our sales will exceed one million in 1963. I am hereby dedicating myself to this magic million. And everything that we touched, almost all of it, was a success. I'll never forget that one day the treasurer of our company came walking into my office and said, congratulations, you are a millionaire. Side by side, day and night, to work to make it happen. This verse should probably talk more about the wealth they built. I think this, right. Because right. their focus shifted on to where they were going and how mm. much money they were making. And yeah. usually when you sit down to write, it's from personal experience. But this is so specific to two people and how their lives started together. 
and the struggles that they went through to make their, their family happen, to make their dreams come true. Now they were rich and had it all, top of the hill. Yeah, look what love built. Yeah, we gotta go that. to a bridge. That's great. That's great. Oh, I like that. I became more and more consumed with the business. And it was exhilarating and it was exciting. But Linda had nothing to do with it. Uh, she had Chris, and then uh, a short while later, Kim was born, our first daughter. After several years, I began to realize that I didn't have much of a relationship with Miller. I hadn't spent much time with him for several years, and I was 24 years old. And sometimes, especially at night, I would cry because I was painfully lonely. I actually got involved in an extramarital affair, and I didn't know how to get out of it, except leave town. Linda sat on the edge of our king-size bed and told me she didn't love me anymore. But what was shocking to me was, she said, I don't love you anymore, and I'm leaving. This is where things go bad. It just basically kind of started, just, you know, came Unraveling. crashing down. or You almost can't see it coming. You know, it's like it seems like they were, it just happened to them without them even realizing so, it. With the Fullers, you know, I can really relate to going for your career, you know, and kind of putting everything aside to, to focus on that goal. You know, I love a challenge, and this definitely has been one, wanting to tell their story so that they would be happy with the song. No. Millard and went to New York City because at that point, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was devastated because our marriage was hanging in the balance. After crying, you know, for two weeks every day, I gave Millard permission to come to New York City. Finally, Linda agreed to see me. When he arrived in New York City, he was the saddest sack I've ever seen in my life. He had on a black trench coat, and it was like death came walking in. I was unsettled, and Linda was unsettled, and so we went uh, walking. At that point, he did not know for sure that I had been having an affair. And I realized that I was going to have to be totally honest with him. And I thought, he's just going to turn around and walk off, and I'll never see him again. Our lives were going to change. And Millard said, I think God just told me what we need to do. I wanted to leave business, and uh, we wanted to give all the money away. What happens? Um, you know that they that she went to New York. Right. So they really thought that there was going to be, yeah, I want a divorce, I want a divorce too. You know, they both were thinking that. Really, you could make this a 20-minute saga because there's so much to tell, you know, and you don't want to leave anything out. I mean, if you didn't know it was a real story, you would swear it would have to be made up. But it's amazing that it is a, a true story. When she finally called, she called. Miller did not know for sure that I had been having an affair. I had, I had to tell him. Uh, Linda confided uh, to me uh, what the situation was in terms of, uh, of, of, of the betrayal of the relationship. I thought we were headed for a divorce. And amazingly, as soon as he, the words came out of my mouth, he just grabbed me and hugged me. It was like a, 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 the dam broke and love rushed in. And we just started crying right there in front of St. Patrick's Cathedral. I was not angry because I felt I was the culprit in the thing. But I, my love for her never wavered, not even for a second. 
It made me realize that he did love me and that I loved him. We got in a taxi and headed back to the Wellington Hotel. On the way back to the hotel, it started raining hard. And these little droplets of water, you know, were all over the windows. It was just a, a, a wonderful calmness that came into the, to the taxi. And Miller turned to me and he said, I think God just spoke to me and told me what we need to do. The revelation came to me that what we should do is, is divest ourselves of our wealth, give our money away, and throw ourselves on God's mercy and ask Him to guide us into a life of Christian service. When I saw that He was willing to give it up, I thought, oh, <laughs> that's great. Let's do it. <laughs> Still, when I think, well, I mean, that's amazing. What's amazing is she didn't turn to him and say, are you a fool? <laughs> I'm really drawn to the godliness of the Fuller family. They gave away their money to save their family, which I think is one of the most admirable things that you can do. And they let go of the guilt. Oh, guilt. Yeah, look, look what love is. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Look what love is. Like it yeah. I was in touch with my business partner, Morris Dees, and I told him that I wanted to give all the money away. We gave grants to missionary work, to churches. I thought my first order of business should be to reconcile with my family. So we spent two weeks just riding around in Florida, going to all the tourist sites and just being together. That was really the first quality family time we'd ever had with the kids. And as God would have it, on the way back, we stopped to see friends at a Christian community in Georgia, Koinonia Farm. At Koinonia, we learned that many people were living in that Southwest Georgia area in houses with no insulation, houses with typically an outdoor toilet, poor living. Here was a need that was not being fulfilled by anyone. Linda and I felt that this was God's calling for us. That was the genesis of building the very first houses. We stayed there and worked at Cornelia for nearly five years, building these modest houses. You can imagine a family moving out of a shack into a house having all the basic needs. We saw it making such a difference. I began to realize that we were on to something, that maybe we ought to create an organization to expand this all over the earth. And so in the spring of 1977, we opened up our first office of Habitat for Humanity. I can't conceive of anything we could have done with our lives that would have had more meaning to it. You can see there's a big smile on my face because I'm happy this family has a good house. The new Habitat Humanity houses are going up about one every 23 minutes. Through the years, we've grown closer and closer to the point now where I think we're probably one of the most blessed couples in the world. The greatest moment is when I sit on the edge of my bed and Linda sits down beside me and says, I love you. So we're what, two lines away? Yeah. Man, I hope so, yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. It started with a single house in Georgia. That's all clear, right? Is that, or you two could do some backing vocals like, it started with a single house in Georgia. Habitat, habitat, the habitat, the habitat, <laughs> habitat, habitat <laughs> for humanity. I will be honored to meet the Foolers. I think it's special what they've done for people around the world. Jamie and Tim and I hope that they are honored by the fact that we took time to write this song for them the way that we are honored by their story. Look what love is. Yes. High five. All right. 
Yeah. <laughs> Let's just hope they love it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Not too many people get songs written about them. It should be just awesome. More scared, nervous, sweaty palm, shaking like a leaf. Well, this is your song, and we hope you like it. We just arrived in Nashville at the studio, and we're really looking forward to hearing our song. Not too many people get songs written about them. So obviously we are first of all humbled. We have heard so many wonderful things about Jamie O'Neill and uh, looking forward to meeting her. Here we go, Shane! We're scared, nervous, sweaty palmed. They deserve a great song to be written about them. We're just hoping that they like it. I'm ready to go, I'm ready to, ready to get in there. So let's go. How y'all doing out there? Ladies and gentlemen, Linda and Miller Fuller. This is your song and we hope you like it. This one is called Look What Love Built.
Thank you all. Come on up. Come on over. It's an honor, honor to meet you, and I want you to meet Shay. Shay Smith. It was perfect. You're wonderful. Thank you. You are too. I just sat there and wept. It brought more emotion to me than I thought it would. I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't know it was going to be that good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. It was a powerful moment, and it renews our determination to use the rest of our lives to continue to be a blessing because we don't feel that God is through with us yet.